Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. It's Tori. Today I'm super excited to be sharing with you guys my top historical fiction recommendations. <laughs> Now, I'm gonna be the first to admit that I have not read as much historical fiction as I would like to. I have a whole bunch on my TBR and on my shelves here that I am really excited to get to in the near future. I really love books that drop me right into the heart of what's going on in any given historical period and is kind of the frontline um, account of whatever is going on. So most of these are incredibly character-focused historical fiction novels. A couple of them are definitely historical literary fiction, but I still count them as historical fiction because they do such a good job of showing the area and the time period um, that they're dealing with. There's a huge range um, in this stack of books. I'm super excited to tell you guys about them. I have read all of these. I'm a big fan of all of these, so let's get into it. The first one you have definitely heard me talk about on my channel before, and this one is a new novel by Baptiste Panson Wu, who is a friend of mine, and he wrote Yellow Sky Revolt, which is the first book in a what's going to be, I think, a 10 book series on the Three Kingdoms Ancient China Civil War uh, historical period. And that was a historical period that I knew literally nothing about before coming into this book. Batiste told me in our interview, which you can watch, I'll put it up in the cards. Um, Batiste told me in our interview that his goal with this series was to bring the richness and the incredible story and characters of this time period to the Western audiences so that we could have a better understanding of what went on and get a chance to meet some of the incredible characters that formed a lot of China's ancient history. Yellow Sky Revolt is all told from the perspective of a young man who grows up in the beginning of the revolution and then uh, gets wrapped up in all of the government major generals who are kind of shaping the dynasty at the time that this book takes place. The main character's name is Liao Hua and it was a beautiful choice to start us off with a very young protagonist that kind of can show us some of the details of this time period that I think we would not have gotten from the perspective of one of the established generals. I absolutely loved this book. You can check out my Goodreads review on it, but I really think that this series is incredibly important because this is a time period period again that I feel like a lot of people don't know much about and Batiste does a really great job of making it super accessible giving us the um, weight and the the importance of this era while also introducing us to the characters in a way that does not feel overwhelming. Next up we're going to take a brief trip over to the more literary side of historical fiction and I'm going to recommend the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. This book takes place on the island of Guernsey right after the German occupation during World War II and the community is kind of reeling from the experience of that and really struggling to kind of pull themselves back up out of the ashes of the experience that they had. And um, our young writer, who is one of the main characters, goes to the island and starts meeting uh, members of the community. And this is one of those books that I read, I had heard, I knew nothing about it, knew nothing about the time period or the area. And it is such a wholesome, beautiful, heartfelt book. Um, I'm not usually a big fan of epistolary novels or I have a little bit harder time with them. This one takes very little effort to get used to the epistolary format. It's done absolutely beautifully. The characters are so heartwarming and easy to connect to and I cannot recommend this book highly enough. It's a very quick easy read and it's got so much heart to it. I absolutely loved it. Next up I am going to include a couple novels that are intended for slightly younger audiences that I think, honestly, the age range doesn't matter because I think adults can get just as much out of these books as anyone uh, who is a younger reader. And I'm going to shout out Graham Salisbury's Eyes of the Emperor. Now this is one of, I think, four books um, of his Prisoners of the Empire series, and you can see on the back the other three books are Under the Blood Red Sun, House of the Red Fish, and Hunt for the Bamboo Rat. I have read all four of them. These books detail the stories of Japanese Americans right after the bombing or around the bombing of Pearl Harbor in 1941 and it's 
so eye-opening and so sobering and so beautifully written. I know that the author went and spent a long time interviewing and listening to the stories of people who had lived through these kinds of things and um, got their permission to write their stories. Eyes of the Emperor, I think of the four, was the one that probably impacted me the most. Honestly, I very much enjoyed three out of the four of them. Um, House of the Red Fish, that one got a little bit like, the characters kind of seemed a little bit more cheesy and contrived and so I didn't enjoy that one as much, but I highly recommend the other three. Eyes of the Emperor specifically has to do with a young man who is very young and joins the army too early, but right after he does that, the bombing of Pearl Harbor happens. This young man and his unit are used in a government experiment and I don't want to get into too many details of what that is. It just goes to show the horrors that war unlocks <laughs> in people and in governments and everything when people are all afraid of each other and looking for any cause to divide. That is my thought on these. I highly recommend these. Um, Eyes of the Emperor is on my list of one of my favorite reads of the year. Um, Hunt for the Bamboo Rat is also phenomenal. That one is about a young man who's used as a Japanese spy. Anyways, they're very, very good and I highly recommend them. Next up, I'm going to recommend a book that comes from my younger years as a reader, and this is a book that really shaped my love of ancient Egypt and history and reading about people in different cultures and different time periods. I absolutely loved this book, and that is The Golden Goblet by Eloise Jarvis McGraw. This story follows a young main character named Ranofer, who is the younger stepbrother of a stonemason, but he wants to become a goldsmith. Ranofer gets caught up in his older stepbrother other schemes and it's uh kind of uh, like light thriller vibes. The thing that I really loved about this when I was a kid was just how rich and beautiful uh, ancient Egypt is portrayed in this book and it led me to do a lot more research even when I was much younger and kind of sparked my love of Egyptian history in general and ancient history as a whole. So this is a book that I highly recommend for middle grade and adult readers both. Next up, I'm going to recommend a pair of books. This is actually technically a trilogy, but I only own two of them and I'm only gonna recommend two of them because those are the only ones that I have read. And that is The Last Full Measure by Jeff Shara and The Killer Angels by Michael Shara. These two books are historical fiction that follow um, a lot of the major names that we hear about in the Civil War and The Killer Angels specifically specifically has to do with the Battle of Gettysburg. It follows multiple different uh, points of view. It does an incredible job of putting you immediately in the action in the middle of these battles and giving a really raw and honest account of what happened and how it affected the officers and the men on the ground. This one is very near and dear to my heart because this one actually includes and names uh, my triple great-grandfather Edward Bassett, who was a member of the Minnesota 1st Infantry during the Civil War. He fought and survived through all of the major battles of the Civil War that most of us have heard of, um, and he was one of a very small number of his regiment to come home. Um, and he's actually mentioned by name a couple of times in the last full measure, which is super, super cool, and it's, it's beautiful that the writers put so much attention to detail and research into giving the stories of some of the just soldiers on the ground who who really you know nobody's going to remember their names in the major history books but they really focused on giving us a well-rounded look at what was going on in these army camps and at the battles with everyone that was involved. Next up, I'm going to recommend one of my favorite non-fantasy authors, and again, this kind of tips a little bit towards the literary side of historical fiction. That being said, oh, she's a good writer. And that is Snowflower and the Secret Fan by Lisa C. Lisa C. really focuses on giving us a generational view of whatever uh, Asian historical period that she's writing in. This one happens to be the story of two young girls who become kind of bonded sister friends at a very young age and they grow up together and they are um, prepared to start their own families and have husbands together and they also go through foot binding together. This book, um, I cried <laughs> during this book. Both of Lisa C's novels that I have read are absolutely incredible and I have cried in both of them. She does such a good job of weaving the characters into some of the most beautiful prose I've ever read. 
It's so good. I can't gush about this woman's writing enough. She's phenomenal. And this one, I think, is a phenomenal look at some of the things that young women during that time period had to endure. So that's all I want to say about her. If you love Lisa C., I will also highly recommend my favorite of her two books, and that is The Tea Girl of Hummingbird Lane, which is also a absolutely phenomenal book and one that will be on my top reads of the year. Next up, we're going to come back over to our side of the world in the U.S., and we're going to recommend Before We Were Yours by Lisa Wingate. This book, again, is tough to read, but it is so powerful. This one follows the story of some young children who were born on a riverboat along the Mississippi River to a family in severe poverty. Um, at that time, some of the orphanages that were being run um, were pretty corrupt, <laughs> to say the least, and they would sometimes take children from their biological parents, take them back to the orphanage, and give them or sell them, essentially, to more affluent families who were looking to adopt children because it would give them a better life. So that should give you a little bit of an idea, kind of the themes and heaviness of this book. Um, again, this is a book that made me cry. It is so beautifully written. It takes place in two different time zones, so when the children are very young, and then there's also something from the point of view of a young woman who is learning more about their story and uncovering what actually happened to these other older women when they were younger. It's very powerful, and for me specifically, I actually have some um, family members that were my great aunt grandmother, great-grandmother, etc., who went through something somewhat similar in an orphanage here in Minnesota, and that's something that I'm actually doing a lot of family research into at this point as well. They were also taken from their family and split. All the siblings were split up. My grandmother was able to find everyone who was still living from the siblings, and they were able to meet some of them for the first time, which was pretty incredible. This one is a very hard read, but it is incredibly powerful and beautifully written, and I think it shows a side of history of the U.S. that honestly, did, like most people have no idea even existed. Um, the next one I'm going to recommend is this very, as you can see, well-loved and well-worn copy of The Tall Woman by Wilma Dykeman. This is an old book. I don't actually know when it was published, 1962. It's the story of a woman who was a pioneer wife and mother and her husband kind of goes off the deep end and she is essentially, mostly throughout the whole book, has to care for her own family herself and really find a kind of strength in herself that I think she didn't even know she had. This is a book I have read multiple times. The character of Lydia McQueen is still to this day one of the most strong female narratives I have ever read. She's amazing. There's such a boss mom vibe to her and some of the things that she overcomes and is able to push through and deal with and, and fix and like all of the things in this book is just really empowering and beautiful to read about. So highly recommend this. I think it's a great book. It was actually recommended to me by my midwife, who is one of my uh, female role models in life. She's an amazing woman. And she was like, Tori, you need to read this. And I did, and I have loved it ever since. Last on this list, but certainly not least, we're gonna go back to the other side of the world. And I'm going to recommend Genghis Birth of an Empire by Con Igledon. Out of all of these books, this is my most recent read of the stack next to me. Um, I read this recently because I had heard that Con Igledon was an incredible historical fiction writer, and man, they were not kidding. This details the story of Temujin, um, who would later become Genghis Khan. It shows his early years in the tribe that was originally led by his father, and what happens to him, his mother, and his siblings as things start to fall apart, and he's put in a lot of situations where it's very survival based and any minute could be his last. The way that Igledon writes this book, it feels like you are right in the middle of everything that is happening. His prose is phenomenally immersive, which I loved. Um, and the way that he really, really commits to the culture that Chinggis Khan grew up in and just makes it so real and rich 
makes me want to go out and do so much more research and read so many more things about this historical period, about Genghis Khan and all of the things. So highly recommend this book um, as a recent read. This one is also going to be up on my list of favorite reads for the year. It's incredible. Highly recommend it. Well, that is the end of the stack, and I really hope that you guys found some new recommendations that you haven't read before. I absolutely love all of these books, and I would love if you've read any of them, please let me know in the description below. And also hit me up with some of your favorite historical fiction book recommendations so that people can read through the comments and get even more, and so that I can go through and add more books to my TBR because... Who doesn't need more books on their TBR, right? Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you are all having a fabulous week. I hope you are all having five-star reads, and I will see you in the next video.